putting legs on my extenders on my um, uh, 40 meter inverted V. I had a CW contact with a VK5 CZ um, south of Bendigo listening. There was a little fire got going, it only went for about 10 minutes. About a foundation introduction to, to two all. meters. Where I'll discuss equipment, antennas, and operating on this most popular amateur band. Uh, yeah, name's Tony, and I'm at Lockwood South. Morning and uh, just on my way home now, the traffic uh, is pretty good. 144 megahertz is one of the popular amateur bands that beginners start with. It's not hard to know why. Two meters provides clear, local, noise-free communication. The antennas are a fairly modest size. You don't need a big tower in your backyard. And the equipment is super cheap. You can buy a basic two meter handheld for around $50 or less. And you'll probably get 70 centimeters thrown in as a bonus. The main equipment on two meters are FM handhelds like this, typically five watts output and battery powered, FM mobile transceivers, often 30 to 50 watts output and 12 volt operated, and all band or mode transceivers. Either portable rigs like the Yaesu FT817 or larger rigs that put out higher power on all bands from HF through to 430 MHz. I'll focus mainly on the handheld and portable rigs in this introduction. One of the first things you should do when you get your new 2 meter rig, whether it be a mobile or handheld, is to program in some memory channels. You need to put in not only the frequency you need, but the repeater offset and also any subtones required. Then when you've programmed in all your memories, you just press scan and the transceiver will scan all the frequencies you've put in, stopping on the busy ones. You know, your hard drive's not big enough, you just sit in the car and you push the button and it works. Programming can be done manually via the keyboard or via a computer interface, which is generally easier. Now what if the signal's noisy? Sorry, last station, you're really uh, struggling to get in the repeater there. I'm guessing you're on a uh, handheld somewhere. The first thing is to look at your antenna. This one is only 17 centimetres long compared to a full-size quarter wave, which is 48 centimeters. You can buy accessory antennas like this, and because this is almost a quarter wave, it's much more efficient. Another thing is that a transceiver case doesn't provide much of a ground plane, particularly on two meters. If you are able to get a connection to the chassis of the transceiver, then you could attach a wire that's a quarter wavelength or 48 centimeters long. If you have the quarter wave hanging down, so it forms a vertical dipole, you should be able to get better signal reports. Then there's the power of extra height. Even a metre or so will help. As for antennas at home, if you're working FM and repeaters, then a vertical antenna will provide all round coverage. With 10 or 20 watts output power, an antenna like this will hit repeaters up to about 100 kilometres away. For simplex communication with other people that are not very high, you might get a 10 to 30 kilometre range. A vertical rip antenna gives good omnidirectional coverage of FM and is good if you live in an urbanised area with lots of repeaters and amateur operators close by. If you're in the country or all your people you want to talk to are in a particular direction, then a beam antenna might be better. This is a four element beam. I've used it a lot for portable use and you've seen it in other videos. With the elements vertical like this, it's suitable for FM, but for SSB, horizontal polarization like this is the norm. Four elements gives a gain of around eight or nine decibels. That's the equivalent of increasing your transmitter output power by seven or eight times. But that's not all, you'll also receive a lot better, so you'll be able to get much further distances. With 5 watts of SSB to an antenna like this, you should be able to make contacts in the 100 to 400 kilometer range, particularly if the guy at the other end is using a gain antenna, which might have many more elements 
and be much higher than yours. Satellite antennas are different again. Because the satellite is tumbling through the sky, you'll want circular polarisation. There's all sorts of antennas you could try, from simple cross dipoles to two beams like this, but mounted at 90 degree angle. That will provide good satellite reception, especially if you have a rotating and steering system, so you can point the antenna. Handheld and mobile transceivers have limited range, particularly in mountainous or built up areas. Repeaters exist on hilltops to extend their range. They're normally put up by local radio clubs or individuals. They pick up a signal from a handheld and retransmit it on an adjacent frequency. That's a much more powerful signal, able to be heard over 50, 100 or even more kilometres. To operate through the repeater, you need to set the radio to the correct transmit and receive frequencies. Your receive frequency must be the repeater's output frequency and your transmit frequency must be set to the repeater's input frequency. On 2 motors FM, the difference in frequency is normally 600 kilohertz, known as the repeater offset. You can tell that a repeater is picking up your signal by the tail that you hear after releasing the button. There may also be a beep and Morse code identification. Repeaters are a shared resource. They only have one channel that they receive and retransmit. When you are transmitting on a repeater, no one else can use it, unless they join your conversation. Fortunately, most areas have so many repeaters that there's enough for everyone, and you'll rarely find all repeaters in use. Uh, just on the Monash Freeway, uh, heading past Day Warren. VK3 Charlie Tango, Mike Portable returning. A little bit scratchy, but uh, certainly getting into the repeater. In some cases, just being within range of the repeater and being on the right frequency isn't enough. Some repeaters require your signal to have what's called a subtone, or CTCSS. The repeater will retransmit signals with a subtone, but ignore signals that don't have the subtone. You'll find details of subtones in a repeater list for your area. And it's always nice to have somebody come back here when you put a call out. Uh, VK3 CTM, VK3 TQ. Repeaters can go further from their immediate coverage area. They can be linked either via RF or the internet. Internet-based repeater linking systems include IRLP, Echolink and others. With internet-based repeater linking systems, all you need to do is punch in a code and your repeater will link up to the distant repeater whose code you've just punched in. That's DX the easy way. The repeater and linking system is doing all the work, but it may still be useful for handheld to mobile chats with people that you wouldn't normally be able to contact. The UHF repeater, I can get into that with 100 milliwatts. One thing I want to talk about is the operating culture on two metres. It's different to HF. On HF, you normally tune around for a station calling CQ, or call CQ yourself. On two metres, that's a bit less common, especially on FM. Because the coverage is often fairly local, you'll get the same groups of people talking to each other all the time. You don't often hear people calling CQ, although sometimes you'll hear people announce that they're listening. If you do hear that, that is effectively the same as a CQ call on HF, and you can come back and give them a call. There are calling channels on Simplex, but depending on where you are, you may or may not get contacts on them, because in some areas, more people may listen to the repeaters. A lot of radio clubs have repeaters and have their club nets or news broadcasts on them. Just after a club net is often a good time to get on air and make contacts on a two metre repeater. Two motors SSB is more like HFDXing. Most contacts are fairly short and to the point. You don't get a lot of rag chewing. Also on SSB, it does pay to do research. It's not quite like HF, where you can turn on any time and hear activity, and reasonably expect to get a contact. For instance, there may be activity sessions held every week, or at particular times, there might be nets or aircraft enhancement sessions. 
if you're the occasional two meter operator, then a VHF field day is a great time to get on air and work all sorts of stations that you don't often hear at other times. You'll find details of local activities in various magazines, club news bulletins, nets and social media. Have a listen around and see what works in your area. We've talked about handhelds and repeaters, but before long you'll want something more challenging. Want an out of this world experience? Why not satellites? With a couple of handhelds and simple antennas, you can have two meter contacts via satellite up to a thousand kilometres or more away. Then there's the space station. Amateurs have spoken to the space station from a simple two metre setup at home. Or you could try receiving pictures. The Russian space station has recently been sending slow scan pictures, easily decodable on a modest two metre setup. For those a bit more advanced, how about bouncing signals off the moon? With high gain antennas and low noise receivers, and decent amounts of RF power, you can talk halfway around the world, provided both of you can see the moon. Scared of losing things? How about tracking them with automatic position reporting systems? Connect a two meter rig and a GPS up to the thing you want to track and you'll be able to monitor its progress through the APRS system. What about fox hunting? That's another sub-interest that's often enjoyed on two meters. Someone hides a transmitter and teams of people either in cars or on foot, go and find it. Again, using the two meter band. That's just a few of the variety of activities that amateurs on two meters can enjoy. It starts with a handheld, but it doesn't need to end there. So